With bulky ski jackets, skis, boots, and all the other gear you need to hit the slopes, find out how to condense everything into one backpack and one ski equipment bag. See what I brought, what I overpacked, find out my packing strategy for condensing everything, and what you must know before ever entering the airport with your gear. So this time we don't have to unpack my bag because I already have it all unpacked blasted in the middle of the living room. I just arrived back home last night after a four day trip to Snowbird. That's the mountain right outside of Salt Lake City. Snowbird is one of my favorite mountains because it pushes me. They have tough terrain, they have powder. It's the first place that I really learned how to drop in after hiking a ridge. Forever grateful for Snowbird and the opportunity to ski there. If you're just now joining us here on the Wild by the Mile YouTube channel, make sure that you watch my first packing video. That's gonna give you the basics and the baseline of how I strategically pack. Everything from the luggage that I have, there is a specific reason I bought this backpack, and how I fit or how I stuff the items inside there to compress the bag and make it as small as possible. This has become, our living room has become my makeshift packing area. I put everything out and then I start picking from there. So if I have four undershirts or two or three pairs of ski pants, a few different pajama options. I lay out all the options, then I start deducting from there. For instance, on a ski trip, what I'm doing all day is skiing. I'll go to dinner and I'll go immediately to bed, probably by 7.30 or 8 p.m. knowing me. I need one or two nicer sweaters or shirts that I can wear to dinner. If I'm there for four days, then I'll probably only pack a sweater and a shirt. Remember, skiing is all about layers. So layering your underbase with a thicker coat. I know that I don't like to be cold and I get cold easily. I would rather bring the thickest gloves that I have in the middle of the ski season. Okay, if this is March or April, yeah, I can get by with thinner gloves. But right now, January, February, I wanna bring my down mittens because my fingers are all gonna be together creating heat next to each other. In my experience, bags such as ski bags and surfboard bags, bulkier equipment bags, are not covered as a free checked bag. Last year when I flew to Salt Lake City to go to Snowbird, I brought a surfboard bag because that is what I had at the time. We're gonna go into that, but um, I put my ski gear in a surfboard bag and I flew United. That cost me $50 each way, so $100 round trip. This year, I flew with a ski bag and I flew on Delta to Salt Lake City. That cost me $30 one way or $60 round trip. You must check your bag 45 minutes prior to departure. Now let's say you arrived at your destination and you're walking down to baggage claim. You're typically gonna go to the baggage claim area that says San Diego flight and the carousel. You're gonna wait for your, all the bags to start rotating on the carousel. With bulky gear bags like this ski bag, you wanna go to the oversized luggage or oversized baggage area. It's still in the baggage area, but it's like up against a wall or just in the back of it. You know how people bring strollers and they gate check them? Meaning you walk down the jet bridge and before you act literally step onto the plane, there's just this little area where they put strollers. I had this thought in my head, okay, Strollers are kind of bulky items. What if I could do this? What if I could just not go to the ticket counter, walk through security, bring this bag, and be like, oh, sorry, I just need to gate check this because that doesn't require a baggage fee. And they put that bag, um, what, when you're deboarding, deplaning, they put that bag back in, onto the jet bridge so you never have to like go back go down to baggage claim. I'm gonna risk this. I thought this in my head. I'm gonna risk this and just try and see. And then I texted my pilot friend and he advised me not to do that. If anyone has taken that risk, please let me know because I would really like to try it. Let's go over all the items I brought. After that, I'm gonna show you how I strategically packed them inside of these two bags. Of course, always playing a game of Tetris. And 
show you what I overpacked and what I learned from this experience. The luggage that I put these items in is my Ruka bag. It's my backpack that I can put all of my camera gear in, my laptop, my toiletries, my shoes, and my clothes. Then my ski equipment gear went inside this bag. It's a Dekine ski bag. It's a single ski bag without rollers, so you only can carry it. I bought this bag a day before my trip to Snowbird this time around because my last Snowbird trip, and even my trip to Taos, I took a surfboard bag because I didn't have a ski bag. And I was kind of just over, I was sick of looking like a kook. And honestly, it's like the surfboard bag is bulkier and heavier because everything's kind of flopping around than just more of a contained, smaller, built for your skis and for your ski gear bag. So I picked up this one. It was literally the only bag they had at REI in San Diego. And Hillary makes fun of me because she's like, are you putting your guns in there and going hunting? Cause it's this like camo-esque print. Coming up in a few minutes, I'm gonna tell you what I learned from using this bag without rollers and what I would do differently. Let's start with toiletries. This is my makeup bag. It has concealer, mascara, band-aids, dental floss, and chapstick. Deodorant chapstick and sunscreen. Breaking news, I got a different brush. If you remember my first packing video, I had a very cumbersome, bulky size brush. Went to CVS and picked up this nice little travel brush. Watch my first video to know why I reuse bottles. So now when I'm flying, I'm gonna try to just use bottles that screw on and they don't have a pump. So that way this can't really leak. This I filled up with my face wash. Toothpaste, a razor, tape for my splint, probiotics, contact solution, and a contact case. Here are the clothes I brought. I have my Patagonia down jacket, which is key. I use it as a layering piece. I use it as a blanket, a pillow. This is a shell by North Face. Um, I use this for windier days, warmer days. My standard airport outfit, which is just a regular black long sleeve t-shirt and black jeans. I wear this to dinner at night and then I brought one other sweater to wear to dinner. One swimsuit, one sports bra. I wore the sports bra to yoga. I didn't bring a yoga top. I just brought yoga pants that I used as my under layer. So I don't have a base layer like, you know, the hot chilies or the Patagonia base layer. I just use yoga pants. I have two pairs of socks. I have a thinner pair of socks and a thicker pair of socks. Um, I just rotate those from everything from sleeping in these at night to wearing these to dinner to wearing these on the plane or wearing these under my ski boots. I just bring two. I have underwear and then one bra, sunglasses, a ski helmet, a water bottle. I always bring a water bottle with me. Ski resorts are really good about having refill stations. So are airports and I like to try and cut down on one use plastic. This is my other ski jacket. This is a thicker ski jacket. It's also by North Face. It's a Summit Series jacket and it has um, like an inside layer. It feels like it has some down in it and then it has the outer shell which is also wind and weatherproof. I use this for cold mornings skiing. One pair of ski pants, just a basic black pair. This is what I chose for loungewear slash pajamas. So right after dinner, I come back to the room and I immediately put on sweatpants and a sweatshirt. This is a buff for skiing. It protects your neck and some of your face. My under layer shirt, which the inside of it is lined with our grid or like a checkered grid fleece. And this is just another simple base layer. I bring two pairs of gloves. I bring my ski gloves. And then these gloves are for when you're walking around town or just, I don't know, like more of everyday gloves to keep you warm. I brought one beanie. I have one pair of shoes. I bring these boots, put them with a simple black outfit or you can wear some, you can dress them up with like a nicer sweater. Of course my skis, my ski poles. And I use these ski poles because they pack down, they're extendable. I have one pair of goggles and I do have a different lens in this goggle container. So this is for brighter, sunnier days. Um, my ski boots. This is my ski backpack, so my day pack for skiing. These items down here, I did not pack, but 
the marketing team has this um, closet that you can go and I guess raid. They have like giveaway items essentially. And so I was able to pick some things up. For instance, I brought home a helmet that's white because I realized that I had like a lot of colors going on between my pink purple skis and my blue jacket and my pink helmet. I wanted either a white or black helmet and I found a white helmet in their marketing office. I brought Hillary home a flask. <laughs> um, because I was borrowing Hill's um, beanie, I decided to pick up another beanie. And then I brought home a base layer, just like the one that I already use and I really like. Okay, let's talk about camera gear. My Osmo Action camera, which is waterproof. It's an action camera for you know, the cold for skiing or you can surf with it. Then I also have the Osmo Pocket, which it can track you. It saved up a lot of weight in my backpack. This is the most unusual item in my pack, swag that Powderbird Helicopter Skiing or Heli Skiing gave me. This was my first time ever heli skiing. So I always believed heli skiing could only be carried out by athletes, you know, with a blue check mark next to their Instagram page, whose bio reads professional athlete, the people who are badass bomb level skiers. Well, I was wrong, at least at Snowbird. They have Powderbird heli skiing and Powderbird heli skiing has designated landing zones that take you to terrain based on your ability. This is Spencer Storm, the operations manager. He walked me through safety training. So I geared up with a transmitter, an airbag, shovel and probe, and he quickly taught me how to use those in case of an emergency. Then outside, I learned how to properly ride in the chopper and unload from it. A pilot, two guides, and Spencer went with me. This is for avalanche measures in the backcountry. So they time out who skis and when in case snow drifts quickly. The pilot dropped us off here on the side of the mountain into deep powder. It's powder that I am just learning how to ski, so it takes a different technique with wider and longer skis. You have to lean back a little more, keep your feet together closer, and use bunny hops to keep you from sinking down during turns. I fell twice, because of course I'm just learning how to ski powder, and I had skis that were way too small, but overall I had a blast. <laughs> if you ask me, was I scared heli skiing for the first time? Honestly, I thrive on scary things, and the crew at Powderbird made me feel comfortable and confident that I wasn't in over my head. I overpacked a swimsuit. The only reason I say that is because I didn't use it. And I overpacked a base layer. The only reason I say that is because I picked up another base layer. All of these clothes, sans minus my ski jackets, went into my backpack. All of my gear I placed in this single ski to kind ski bag, or it's called a single ski sleeve. It's padded on the inside. That means that I had to play a game of Tetris and sometimes it takes a few attempts. You can't get frustrated. Even though I packed this here, when I got to Snowbird and when I was repacking my bag to come back home, I was like, but wait, I've already done this. Like, why is it taking me so long? Sometimes it just takes you a few more minutes and you have to remember your strategy that you figured out the first round. And it really does take a strategy. This bag is only meant for one pair of skis. I managed to put my ski boots, my helmet, my ski bag, my poles, my goggles, my jackets, all of that fit into here. I placed my one ski boot on the end of the bag. So this ski boot on this end, this ski boot on this end. If you look at the distance or the length of the bag, that doesn't fit. So I had to get creative. I stuffed the end of my skis inside my ski boot as much as it could and then placed it in the bag. The first time I did this, I put the skis like this. Well, then I noticed, oh, I didn't have enough room on the sides of the skis. So I didn't have enough room to place my helmet and zip it up. So then I thought, okay, how do I reduce the width that I'm using of the bag? Well, why don't I turn my skis the opposite way? 
So I place the end of my skis in this boot and the tips of my skis, I place one tip in this boot. Therefore, the length of the bag, I got that to work. Then next, it was about looking at where the bag was wider and where the bag was narrower. You have to figure this out yourself. The narrower part of the bag, that's where I can stuff. Remember, stuffing is key when you're packing. I was able to just stuff in my ski jackets. I was able to stuff in my ski poles. Now I need to look for the widest part of the bag because the part besides the boots and the skis, the leftover gear that's the bulkiest is your helmet. So then I just looked at, okay, well, where's the, the most width in my bag, the widest part of my ski gear bag, and I put my helmet. And yeah, it takes some maneuvering. Here is what I learned. This ski bag is just the right size for me. When I say just the right size, I mean this is the smallest bag that I could possibly own or buy. I am going to Japan in one week from today, and I said, this bag is not going to work for me, so I probably am going to take it back to REI. It was a $90 single ski sleeve bag, and I bought this one today at Hangar 94. This is a Dekine bag as well, and it fits two skis, meaning, well, it's gonna be a little bigger for my bulkier items, my ski boots, my helmet. I don't have to worry so much about playing this Tetris game. But the single most reason that I bought this bag is because it's on wheels. I wanna stress this wasn't bad carrying it around, but it was for just a short amount of time. If I wanna do uh, a trip like Japan where I'm gonna be getting on the bullet, the train, I'm gonna be figuring out how to navigate around Tokyo, this is gonna stress me out and it's gonna weigh me down. If I have this ski bag on rollers, I'm, a, I'm more mobile. If you have any packing tips for ski equipment, surf equipment, skateboard equipment, any kind of gear that you're lugging around the airports, please let me know in the comments below, especially because I'm going on a long haul international flight, 11 hours from San Diego to Tokyo. I need all the advice and the tourist tips I can have from you on everything from restaurants to hotels. See you next Sunday, 7 p.m. West Coast time. Have a great week.